Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today's manifestation video is going to be on a topic that I actually love. And it's all about manifesting your specific person. I want to kind of talk about a little bit about my experience in this realm and also debunking some of the myths and kind of breaking it down in a different way that maybe helps you like digest it a little bit more. So as always, if you like this video, be sure to comment, like, share, um, subscribe. Let's me know that you wanna see more videos like this. Leave me a comment. Let me know what specifically about manifesting a specific person you might want to see because I can make tons of videos on this in my course, which is currently on sale for $99. Um, it is like 70% off its usual price right now. It's a video library. I give exercises, um, videos, and I'm going to talk about my personal story more in depth over there. So if you're interested in manifesting love, manifesting better relationships to money, um, self, your body, uh, I kind of hit all the bases over there. It's called revise your mindset. Um, so there's that or a workbook if you'd rather do the workbook but right now the course is on sale for 99 dollars, and you're in for life anything that i add uh to the course you will have access to so definitely take advantage of that you get included you can join the facebook group if you have any specific questions for me and i always interact over there on the facebook group um it's still you know undersaturated but Let's dive into today's topic, okay? Manifesting a specific person. I feel like the first thing, the first thing that I want to do and talk about is debunk this whole theory of like, well, isn't manifesting a specific person like casting a love spell? Doesn't it bring bad karma? Isn't it going against their free will? So here's the thing. I'm going to kind of give a couple explanations for this first and foremost like if you're in the law of assumption community neville goddard if you've studied neville goddard um law of assumption it's basically that everybody is us pushed out so therefore like nobody has free will you are the creator of your own universe complicated version there's so many different universes timelines that are happening at the same time so in one timeline there is a version of you out there that exists that is happily married or with your specific person so all you have to do when we're manifesting specific person all we're doing is we're manifesting that version of ourselves that has that person complicated right Breaking it down, breaking it down in the way that like I've been able to digest it or I've had an understanding of it and I'm kind of going to give you the thing and then I'm going to give you like my insights on it. But it's like this. It's like if you it's all about self-concept and that's why I love manifesting a specific person because one when we work on our self-concept, when we really do these changes, when we align with that version of ourselves that is chosen, that gets the guy or gets the girl, um, not only does specific person conform, but like your environment starts to change. So I actually love specific person manifesting because you get to use that specific person as sort of a barometer. And, and, and there's nothing that makes you feel more powerful then getting somebody external to you, getting to witness this person conforming to the energy that you're putting out. So I actually love using specific person manifestation techniques just because of that barometer effect and the fact that it's like, you know, it, it, it really is transformative whether you decide at the end you wanna be with that person or not. But let me kind of explain and break down how it how it would work. And then I'll go into more depth and detail. But again, my course, if you wanna take part of it, I'm gonna go into depth of my personal manifesting SP stories and also where I, where I went wrong, where it took me way too, like why it took me so long to be successful um, in that process because Again, I hadn't stumbled upon like the Law of Assumption community or Neville Goddard until recently, but I had always had this kind of um, belief. Like I remember 
years ago, there was this guy that I liked or this guy that I was interested in. And I would catch myself kind of being like, do you think he likes me too? Like, is he gonna ask me out? Like, is he gonna do this? And then I remember talking to my roommate and I was like, you know what? Why do I even question that? Like, what if I believed with 100% certainty, of course he likes me. Of course he's gonna ask me out. Like how much differently would I move and act? You know, if I just believe that, like, of course he likes me, of course he's gonna ask me out instead of being like, does he like me? Like this emanating, like this uncertainty, you know? Um, and like, I kind of started shifting into that. I was like, why don't you just think the best? Think the best thing. And little did I know, I'm like practicing law of assumption or I'm practicing, you know, these manifestation things, uh, but, that being said, that's sort of how I feel like manifesting your specific person works. It's like, one, it's a little bit trickier when you're in like no contact with that specific person. It can be trickier just because you're not gonna get the barometer. You're gonna really have to assert discipline and ignoring the 3D and ignoring the fact that they're not there. But sometimes I think no contact is easier because it's like you can really just assume whatever the hell you want. Like they're sitting on their couch and they're sad and they're like, or, or you know, they're sad, they're missing me. Of course they miss me. Why wouldn't they miss me? All the things, you know? Um, but when this person is kind of right in front of you, it's a lot easier to see like instant changes. And mind you, all this is contingent on your belief that it works, okay? If your assumption is that the law of assumption doesn't work, then guess what? That's exactly what's happening. Um, but imagine if I were to sit here and be like, this person is cheating on me. Like I'm, I'm dating somebody and I'm like, this person's a player, they're cheating on me. These are all my assumptions based on my old narratives, based on my old stories of not being chosen. Then I'm going to admit that. I'm gonna admit that. And then I'm gonna probably be like suspicious all the time. I'm going to be acting like, who are you talking to? What are you doing? Um, and, and you guys, I've been, I've been guilty of that, okay? I've done that. And I like, in hindsight, that's taking accountability of like how we manifested. Um, that's like manifest your SP numero uno is looking back and like really owning how did I manifest these situations that happened to me? And I'll get more into that. Sorry, I don't, operate on a script, you know? It's just like we're having a conversation. So um, imagine that energy versus like, of course they're not cheating on me. Of course they don't want anybody else but me. Then you're emitting this energy that's like your specific person kind of has to conform because you're operating on a different wavelength. You're no longer this insecure person. Like, are there other people out there that's gonna make them question like, well, shit, I'm not cheating, but maybe I should be. Like, maybe there's other people out there who are like more secure, more confident versus operating from that confidence. Like, of course they're not cheating on me. Of course they would never think to look anywhere else. Your person is gonna kind of feel that energy and it doesn't really matter what's going on in their head or, you know, whatever you assume is they're thinking is what they're thinking, but I like to think of it from a perspective of the energy that you're radiating. It's like, they're the ones who should be worried if you're out gonna find somebody, you know? Or you're this like, but they have to conform to whatever you believe, but also you're just gonna behave differently. You're gonna behave differently. Like when we're not operating from that place of anxiety and we're operating from the place of confidence of I always get what I want, everybody loves me, everybody like, I'm always chosen, I'm prioritized, I'm pursued, then either this person is going to fall off and you're gonna be like, oh, I'm not even interested in that because I'm prioritized and pursued. Like I do that for myself. I take into account my well-being and my good behavior. This person's either gonna conform or they're gonna fall off. In manifest your SP world, in law of assumption world, they always conform, they have to conform. And that's where it's like you, like there's something that happens in the 3D and it's okay to accept like, okay, this didn't feel good. Processing these feelings, feeling the feelings, but then also making assumptions that align with the version of you that you wanna be. So say they do something shady 
And then it's like, instead of like attaching to that, attaching to that narrative and that story and starting to stalk and do this and do that, it's like getting yourself to a place where you're like, that's nothing. Um, they would never do, like, they wouldn't do this to me. You know, like, I don't know what's, whatever story you want to create that's more beneficial than like stressing yourself out running in circles. Okay. And like to give examples, you know, I definitely operated from the narrative of not being chosen very often. And like, think of how powerful it is. This is where when people are like, the law of assumption doesn't work, manifesting doesn't work. It's like, you're always manifesting. Think of like, man, I've been in situations where like, I've seen texts come through or I've seen like, okay, you go and you look at their like following, who's following them. And then like it plants the seed. It's like, okay, who is this girl? It plants the seed and then like you have no proof. You have no proof that anything's going on. And then like at the end of the day, you keep looking, you keep looking, you keep looking for the proof, you keep looking for the proof. What happens? You find the proof, okay? You end up finding the proof. You manifested that. You manifested that. Like at this point when I do that, I'm like, I just hurt my own feelings. We all know that feeling so well. Like I just hurt my own damn feelings because I went looking and looking and looking and looking until I found it. Instead of looking and being like, well, I haven't found anything. So it's obviously not real. No, we continue to look, 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 look. I gotta find this thing. And the universe, your subconscious is gonna be like, I'm gonna deliver because I'm here to help you create. I'm here to help you create, whether it's intentional, unintentional, but I want you to be happy. I want you to be happy. And what your subconscious thinks is going to make you happy is you proving yourself right. You proving yourself right, giving you what you want, what you desire. So if <laughs> your subconscious doesn't know like good versus bad. So if you're going searching, if you're stalking, if you're looking for evidence, your subconscious is going to be like, well, it seems like evidence is going to make her happy. So let me give it to her. So mind you, in a past situation that like I have done some revising work around, like I've gone back, I've revised, I've gone back and seen all the ways that I manifested that. And it was really beautiful because I've gotten confirmation in my 3D of this. It took a long time to get it. But in my course, I kind of go into like why it took me so long why it took me so long, because honestly, if you're like really disciplined and dedicated to altering your self-concept, doing the manifestation techniques needed, or changing your relationship, first and foremost with yourself, it shouldn't really take you that, shouldn't take you years to manifest a specific person. But again, time is irrelevant. And I've learned that after having like gone through so many years, all right? so. Back in the day, I was in a situation where I did just that, where I like, you know, I looked, I looked, I looked, and I found, I found. I found enough to build my like little, you know, like, you know, in the like detective movies when they have like the little board and stuff. I'm like that, that that's me, that can be me, okay? I could put two and two together. Um, I know my way around like the iPhone. Uh, <laughs> I know how to, I know how to, I, like the FBI, I, I picked the wrong, I picked the wrong career because I should have been in the FBI. But the crazy thing is like I had enough information to make my story, to make my confirmation of I'm not chosen, I'm not enough, I'm not this. And then it's like I succumb in that moment where I really didn't have that much information, okay? I really didn't have the whole story. I had the story that I wanted that confirmed my belief of you know, not chosen, not enough, all the things. And then I succumb to that belief by being like, instead of being like, no, this is nothing. Let this play out. This is an old manifestation. It's gonna play out. You're always chosen. You're the best option. Everything is happening for you. Bridge of incidents. Like there's all these different ways I could have looked at this situation or made it positive, but I chose the story that kind of made me feel shitty and kind of put me into like this heartbreak. Um, 
And it was like really nice because I worked so hard on revising that. And what, like I said, when I revise that, I'm taking accountability for how I manifested that. Like everything that I just told you, uh, I was like, you know, I was looking for that. I really didn't have the full story. So by the time I'm confronted with the person who this happened with, um, I got the story. I got the story. And it was like enough time where I could sit and listen to the story and accept the truth and see the truth. And it was... Him, like it was him telling me he's like you know you had a totally <laughs> wrong conception of what had happened in this instant it was so different it was same but also different it was like it wasn't like and, and it was something that I needed to hear where it was like it wasn't like I chose one over the other you know it was like I was very honest and and that was the truth like there was a lot of honesty involved um, but I still hurt my own feelings because I went looking for something instead of sitting in my confidence and knowing and my worth and my value and knowing what I bring to the table. I went looking for confirmation to validate like my lesser beliefs, my insecurities. Um, and like in hindsight, years, years, years later, reconnecting with that person and having this conversation where it's like, this is what really happened. And I was able to accept it because I was like, yeah, that goes along with my new narrative of like, you know, and, and it was kind of like you put yourself out of the running, which fair enough, fair enough. Like I was very honest about where I was at and wh what I was willing to give and what I was not willing to give. Um, but, you know, what you perceive as me choosing somebody else was really somebody else just being there. <laughs> and then like, Eventually I chose them because like, you know, that's, you know, I could go a lot further into that. But again, um, everything's assumption. So like, say you're in a situation right now where you've gone through a breakup and you see your person moving on to another relationship and the, the, the story you're choosing to tell yourself is like, oh my gosh, they're so much happier without me. That is an assumption. That is an assumption. And it's one that you don't know if it's true or not. You don't know that to be true or not. But by you reiterating that to yourself, you're you're kind of like the only person hurting yourself is you. So it's like kind of a free range thing where you get to choose. You get to choose what they're feeling. You get to choose what they're thinking. Like, sure, and also that you've create like taking accountability for you creating that situation in which like oh you're seeing them happy with somebody else you don't know that you don't know that you don't know what's going on behind the scenes um and even like everybody's you pushed out so it's like it doesn't even matter if they're like it doesn't matter if they're with somebody else i just reconnected with somebody who like in the like we dated so many people in between um and it it like time doesn't matter those things don't matter. And the quicker that you can release that attachment to like, these things matter, these circumstances matter. Oh, this person told me they don't love me. There's no use. Um, again, see how you manifest. How did I manifest that? How did I manifest that? How did I create that situation? Like the times there where somebody has been like, I'm not in love with you. Um, it's like, okay, one, why am I asking? Why am I looking for validation or confirmation? Why would I not just believe, of course they love me? Of course they, like, and that's where you persist through. Like, if somebody were to tell me that, I'd just be like, liar. <laughs> liar, how can you not love me? Like, that's obviously a lie. Moving on, not giving energy and attention to that. Um, and it's like, it's going, to, why would I, why would I entertain something that doesn't make me feel good? And I get to choose. I get to choose that. Whether whether in their reality that's real or not, I don't really care. In my reality, it's like you're lying. Um, you're obviously trying to convince yourself of that. You know, like let yourself be a little bit delusional. But like that's not my reality. In my reality, nobody falls out of love with me. Are you kidding me? Um, what I was getting at before was that People change their minds all the time. Circumstances change all their time, all the time. Like think of all the times that you've changed your mind. Um, and I think that's where we get so locked in on this like, 
feeling of like permanence. It's like, I can say I don't want a relationship today, but change my mind tomorrow, you know? So it's like, you kind of have to believe that of nothing's permanent. How many times do people break up? How many times do people get divorces? Like their circumstances don't matter. Circumstances don't matter. Sometimes, and especially in like situations that I've had where people have like gotten engaged and like told me it's like, I'm probably gonna marry this person. And I like fully just accepted it. I fully accepted it thinking like, well, it's done, it's over now. And granted that was probably the healthiest decision for me at the time to release that and let it go. Uh, but I also think like I would have these things. I was like, man, I was going through like this, like reality timeline hop thing where I was like, there's probably a reality where that guy's not getting engaged and I could tap into that reality. And then like for a second I did because I was like, okay, I'm going to go to this restaurant. And at this restaurant, if he shows up, then yes. And I, he drove by, he drove by the restaurant, but I didn't persist through that. I kind of gave up immediately. So I really wasn't dedicated or disciplined in the thought of like manifesting this person to like move on from his engagement or to decide like, it's you that I want to be with. <laughs> I wasn't committed, wasn't committed to it. Worked out for the best, but that is also kind of like, you have to commit and persist, not to the, not to manifesting the person, but to your new story, because you're going to see a lot of things show up in that fully conformed new version of you reflected outwards, if that makes sense. But this video, I think is long enough now. So if you have any questions or specific videos that you want me to kind of make videos on this topic, then be sure to leave that down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your success stories when it comes to manifesting a specific person, because I think it can help a lot of people um, have that feeling of success or motivation to dedicate to themselves and, and really work on changing the story. I think that's the most important thing. Like you're taking the person off the pedestal and you're putting yourself on the pedestal. You're really manifesting the version of yourself that you want to be. And that's the beauty of it. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you 